Good afternoon. Welcome to the May 2nd, 2023, 4 p.m. Griffin Spalding Board of Education work session. This meeting is now called to order. Please place all electronic communication devices on silent or vibrate. At this time, before we go to our Pledge of Allegiance and prayer, I would like to yield two minutes of my time to the superintendent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, at this time, if I could have Dr. Sweet Dixon, Mr. Carenza Barnes, Dr. Chris Ridley, if you guys would just stand over here. I would like to take a moment, board members, uh, members of the audience and those online, to formally introduce uh, these three administrators who have been uh, appointed to serve in these administrative capacities in the 2023-24 school year. So, Dr. Chanel Sweet Dixon, uh, she will be serving as the principal of Atkinson Elementary beginning next school year. Congratulations, welcome aboard. <laughs> Mr. Corinza Barnes will be serving in the capacity of principal for Orr's Elementary School next school year. And Dr. Christopher Ridley will be serving in the capacity of executive officer of student, I mean, executive director of student services next school year. Welcome aboard and congratulations. <laughs> and you guys just, and if you'll just come this way and give this, this uh, body of individuals a, a hearty handshake. Dr. Ridley, as you see, Leader Holmes is our jokester of the group. I'm sure he has plenty of more coming for you. All right. This time we're going to go to our pledge, allegiance, and prayer. I'm going to ask that the gentleman from the second lead us in our prayer and pledge. Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day, the opportunity to come and do the business and hear the presentations, Father, Lord, that concern our students and our teachers and our parents in this community. We ask, Father, Lord, that you continue to lead and guide us in making the very best decisions we can for our community. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, item three of the agenda, adoption of the agenda. What is the pleasure of this body as it relates to the adoption of the workshop agenda? It's been properly motioned by Leader Holmes of the third. Is there a second? Second. A second provided by Mr. Doss of the second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please vote by raising your right hand. 4-0, the agenda is adopted. Now we're moving on to our announcements. The gentleman from the second, Mr. Will Doss. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have uh, School Nutrition Hero Day, which is Friday, May 5th. Teacher Appreciation Week will be next week from the 8th through the 12th. Uh, National School Nurse Day is May 10th. Receptionist Day is May 10th. And then Friday, May 12th, is National School Communicators Day. So, Adam, they have a spot for you also. I'm, I'm very impressed. So uh, those, that concludes your report, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, Mr. Doss, for those announcements. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're moving down to the consent agenda. What is the pleasure of this body as it relates to the consent agenda for today? It's been probably motioned by Leader Holmes of the 3rd District. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. McDonald of the 5th. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please vote by raising your right hand. 
All righty, presentations and discussions. Summer feeding update, Mr. Robert Wheeler. Mr. Wheeler, if you would just hold off for one second, let Ms. Cook get situated before you start. Good afternoon, Chairman Brown, um, Board of Education members, Dr. Simmons, Superintendent. I'm going to do a presentation on summer meals um, and our efforts this summer. Our non-negotiables are to be professional, accountable, and communicate effectively. And our focus areas are least, which is literacy, enrollment, attendance, and dis discipline and solving. Um, our mission and our vision is a distinctive brand, strong leaders, great schools. And our mission is to empower each student to graduate college and career ready. <clears throat> Our focus areas or our uh, objectives are to align resources to student and staff needs. The goal areas are organizational efficiency and family and community engagement. <clears throat> so our summer meals this year will be offered through June, I mean June, through the month of June, off June 19th. Uh, we'll serve breakfast and lunch. Times of service will be from 7.30 to 8 o'clock and lunch will be from 11.30 to 12 o'clock. We'll have a half hour after each one of the meal services to serve uh, children 18 and under. Uh, meals have to be consumed in the actual site, which is the definition of congregate feeding. Um, after, meals are available to all children 18 and under in these open um, school sites. Our summer menu will have both hot and cold items on it. This is an example of the menu. It's gonna be similar to that which we do in the regular school year. Um, so what's coming up next? We, we earned an equipment grant for Ann Street Elementary to, to purchase new serving lines in the total of 37196 So we'll be uh, sending out an action memo for that in the month of June once I validate that the quotes are still valid. We'll have large equipment bids to purchase all of the, an IFB for large equipment. That will be used to purchase all this failing equipment that we have in the district that's aged out. Uh, we'll need to spend down some of our fund balance for that purpose. Refrigeration equipment, those pass-throughs to serve line to maintain the temperatures of the food. Um, we've had some sightings on that. We'll do some bid renewals for milk, bread, and produce. We, those are uh, fairly uh, recent bids. And we'll be doing piggybacking, which is we're getting on the bids of other districts, uh, groups of schools, districts. It gives us the power to purchase at the, the um, rate that a Fulton County or DeKalb County will have that same purchasing power. We do that for commodity processing through Calvin City and Lowndes. Uh, we have our U.S. Foods bid with Coweta. Um, we are also able to get the um, same contracts that we have, like our SFS pack, which is our chemical company. We're on with Lowndes now. We're, we had a reduction in the price of about $3,000 a month. An upcoming request for proposal, we ventured into this last year where we moved to HST, which was an upgrade uh, to, to the Horizon software, but Horizon is no longer gonna support K-12, so we'll be back in the industry looking for food service management software to service the needs of our school district. Are there any questions? Hold on one second. We have heard the presentation from Mr. Wheeler. Are there any, is there any discussion at this time? Leader Holmes. Yes, I, I don't have a question, uh, Mr. Wheeler, but I do have a comment. Now, I, I asked <clears throat> uh, some years ago about school system uh, partnering to increase their purchasing power. Uh, in, in the industry I worked in, that was something that, you know, we're having companies, you know, uh, statewide and worldwide, that was something we were able to do. But this is the first time I've seen anything uh, remotely close to that. So I, I don't know who came up with it or where it originated from, but this is the kind of stuff that I think school systems are missing out on because they don't collaborate and increase their purchasing power. If they get together, if everybody got to buy buses, hey, let's, let's buy 
you know, a large quantity of bus, in your case, food items. So I just want to, you know, make that notation and, and uh, let you know that's appreciated from someone that's looking at numbers. So I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Yes, Mr. Dossi, recognize? These, I realize that some are feeding students that are at school are eating first. Do we have any back numbers of how many students actually then take advantage of coming in and eating? So we're going to mainly be supporting the um, efforts of Ms. Alston, but it's going to be a day, but we're going to have to fill that out to see how many students will come in and eat after that uh, service period. We're going to do that wait so we don't intermix our students, the ones that are in school and whatnot. We also will have um, small treasures. They will service the community. It's the same program as a summer food service program. We are seeing the summer in that we take the decal program and just make it um, appropriate for schools. So it, they will have the same service throughout the whole summer. So we won't miss any, any city students. Also any uh, other groups like athletic programs, bands, whatnot, or if they're on campus, we're gonna serve them as, as well. Awesome, thank you. Ms. McDonald, anything? I do, I just had a quick question, Mr. Brown, thank you. So Absolutely. Our students can go to the, are the, the schools that are gonna be open are the summer school schools? Yes. Okay, and that, so uh, a child in, in high school from Griffin High can go to Oars and get breakfast and lunch? They can, okay. 30 minutes after the period. Okay, I was just unsure as to which schools will be now, open. We will have meals at Griffin High School because their athletic program normally is there. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Soup, go ahead. So, Mr. Wheeler, for, for clarity, will, will any school-age student be able to have a meal at any of the feeding sites, or will it be, um, I don't know the lack of terms, I, I, my, you know what I'm saying? In other words, are there designated sites based on school patterns, or is it just a matter of getting to a site during the, the designated time. I think that's the question that she's yes, asking. Exactly. Right. Any child can come to any one of the six sites um, and the two high schools because where we offer meals there um, at those, those service times that we're doing it, um, 30 minutes after we serve the students that are enrolled in those classes. That's great. Thanks. And my question, Adam, when, was this, when would this roll out as far as making the public aware of the six sites and the process behind that all right Good <laughs> thank you so much uh, mrs. cook Dean cook any questions or comments comments okay all right thank you so much mr. Wheeler we greatly appreciate you all right our next update will come from mr. Adam Pugh with the website design and rollout All right, good afternoon. Chairman Brown, Superintendent Simmons, and Board of Education. Thanks for letting me share with you uh, about our new website platform uh, and, and the rollout of that. And Lonnie, if you don't mind driving for me, that way I won't mess anything up on this touch screen here. Um, our non-negotiables, of course, are be professional, be accountable, and communicate effectively. Uh, this 100% is in an effort to communicate effectively uh, and efficiently. Next. Um, Everything on our roadmap to success uh, will be enhanced or improved uh, or, and, and positively impacted by this, this new website platform. So we're switching from Catapult K-12 to Aptigy. Uh, I believe we began using Catapult in 2018 uh, and, and many other school systems are switching to Aptigy and, and you'll, you'll soon see why. Next. These are, these are the whys, and I won't go through every single bullet because you've got them in front of you to refer to and to refer back to in the future, uh, but please reach out to me also if, if you have questions. But it's the, first and foremost, it's mobile friendly. This was designed to work well on phones and mobile devices such as tablets first, uh, but then also to function well uh, as a website you know, on a, a desktop or laptop computer. About 70% of users now uh, are accessing websites from mobile devices, which is a big shift from 2018. Um, 
it's optimized so that it will function you know, great uh, on those cell phones and tablets. It also will have a corresponding app. Uh, so if folks want to access uh, and, and have interactive flow of information uh, very quickly and efficiently, they can utilize the app. Uh, and, and that would be a free app that they would download. Uh, and, and there'll be such uh, ease to valuable information. We hope that will uh, make it worthwhile to, to keep that app uh, on our, our stakeholders' phones. Uh, things such as uh, schedules, uh, upcoming important dates for events, uh, school menus so they can look on the app uh, and see what's going to be for lunch the next day. Also the ability to communicate there. Um, a neat feature that I'm most excited about is it integrates messaging across all platforms. So not only the website and the app at the same time, but it will also simultaneously put messaging on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So when we push out a message or when any school ambassador pushes out a message, it can instantly go out to all of them. It's also easy to do it from a mobile device. So if you're at a, an awards event, you can take pictures from your phone, type in some content, push it out across all those devices right there from your phone. You don't have to email it to your computer, go back later and, uh, and do that. It will also replace parent link. So if we have a snow day and we want to communicate through all possible communication channels, uh, we can do that at one time uh, through this application through, they call it thrill share, but that's, that's the application uh, of Aptigy that allows you to push it out not only through social media, website, and app, but also through text message, email, and phone call all at the same time. So much more efficient than having to use multiple programs should take a lot less time. So those are the whys. Um, and let's talk about what's been done so far. Again, I won't read every bullet, but there's been a lot of work done. Um, Lonnie has done the behind the scenes work with licensing and uh, making sure that everything's ready and will integrate with, with Google, all the, the trademark work. Uh, we've begun the training process. We selected uh, a layout for the new website. And in just a moment, I'll show you that template um, and then Training has, has been ongoing and will continue uh, until we roll out this, this, new, uh, this new product. Uh, again, um, you know, we'll be continuing uh, with, with that training. Uh, so far, it's, it's, you know, with anything, there's a learning curve, but it's, it's certainly going to be worthwhile uh, once we get uh, everything uh, migrated over to the new platform. So Lonnie, if you'll show us the template for the Aptigy website, pretty please. You can see you've got video and that's gonna look just as good on the phone as it does here in, in the computer website mode. Our video is not gonna have you know, one subject matter like that one is, is kids doing art. Ours, Brian Miller and I are already working on a video that'll highlight you know, some of the best things, best experiences that we offer here throughout all the grade levels of Griffin Spalding. Uh, so we'll have, we call that a, a hero video, uh, and that'll live there. Uh, in the future, each school could potentially have their own branded video. Uh, if you'll scroll down for me, Lonnie, you can see there's a live feed there, and so that will show what's uh, most recent on the school, the, the, the website's social media. So whether that be the district or the individual school, if you'll keep scrolling for me. Um, you've got news, so that that's some of the, the stories uh, on the right. You've got event dates. And again, this is a template. It's not been populated with, with our info. Uh, but right now, Aptigy is in the process of migrating all the data from our current websites uh, over to this new template and, and platform. And you can move to the next uh, uh, image of the app, if you will. At the bottom there, there'll be just kind of a snapshot of the, uh, the district. Uh, so that if anyone wants to look at it and kind of see at a glance what is this district about, what are some things that, that they have done, are doing, that'll live there at the bottom across all the websites. Um, and hopefully that'll be something where if, if someone's interested in becoming an employee of our district, that will sell us at a glance. The app uh, will be this next link that we'll share. And again, this is just sort of a general template. Of course, it'll be branded with Griffin Spawn and County Schools, but when this loads, this is uh, just an idea of what the, the app will look like. So they'll be able to find the school calendar, you know, 
with, with one click. Uh, and so that'll streamline the process. You won't have to go to Google and, you know, and try to find the information you need. You'll have a lot of it right there in the app at your fingertips. Uh, and then I'll just show you as a reminder what our current website looks like. That's the next slide. And thank you, Lonnie, for driving for me. And it's a good looking website and it has a, a lot of the same information. Instead of dynamic video, it just has some, some static images that, that scroll across. Um, of course, constant contact will be integrated into the new website like it is the current. The biggest challenge of our current website is that right there. Uh, oftentimes images get cropped because it's older technology and it's not optimized for a phone or a tablet or whatever size screen you're looking at. Uh, so that'll be the most obvious difference between the current uh, and the new is it's going to look good regardless of what you're looking at it from. Uh, but it'll have a lot of that same information, uh, just hopefully a, a lot more efficient and convenient. All right, next slide, Lonnie. So what's happening now? Uh, today we had one more training uh, and, and we'll continue those to, until everyone that currently uses websites uh, is trained on, on how to do it with the new platform. Again, I mentioned we're going to be working on migrating that data, uh, working on the, the new video uh, the, you know, with the branded content. Uh, and then we're just going to be editing, we're checking and make sure everything that moved over is stuff that we still need. Uh, some of it will, you know, will decide is, is, is not, you know, necessary under the current platform uh, and we'll, we'll, that's, that's the process for the next month is just get it migrated and then the ambassadors at each school and Laura and I will be busy just editing and, and uh, fine tuning and cleaning up all those, those websites, making sure they're fresh and new and ready to roll out. Uh, in the last slide here, what's, what's next? Continued training, but then um, the rollout will take place in June. So we're, we're pretty close to that. Uh, and it'll be out for folks to get familiar with it. And then when we kick off the next school year, it'll be there in, in, in full glory and full functionality. Is there any discussion or questions that I could help answer for you guys? All right, we have heard the presentation from Mr. Pugh. Is there any discussion? I'll go first. Um, just so glad to see that we are moving forward and keeping up and, and, and being a trendsetter in communications here in education. And a, a lot of times when we go to the conferences, especially in Savannah, uh, this was one of the sessions that Mr. Dawson and I attended as they were talking about school communications and having that website. And so I have a couple of questions for you, uh, Mr. Pugh. How many communications channels does the district currently have um, as it relates to keeping stakeholders and parentals updated? Uh, all the ones that I mentioned, so I, I'll just go through them right here. Um, Email, text, phone call, website, we will have app, which will be new, and then Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right. And so it is true that going with this particular uh, system or, or application allows us to keep that to one channel that will funnel through the many different sub-channels. Through to, eight additional, yes, sir. Yeah, to make sure that... Uh, parentals and scholars are, are up to date with what's going on in the district. Uh, what, what type of training will be done for the ambassadors at each of the schools for this particular application? It's a great question. So the initial training is taking place virtually um, and, and so there are two training sessions with each ambassador. Uh, those two training sessions have already taken place uh, with the elementary and middle school. Today was the first of two training sessions with the high school and then for principals and district, that'll be in the, in the future, near future, after testing uh, has completed. But the good thing that I neglected to mention is unlike our current application where the communication department has the ability to access uh, customer support, mm -hmm. now everybody in our district who uses it at any moment can access customer support through um, type or, or, or text and someone will jump on and, and, and type back with you uh, or through a, a phone line. Uh, so there is uh, much more in the way of kind of on the job training. If you hit a snag, you just make a phone call or, or send a message and someone's there to walk you through it with Aptigee and I'm excited about that. That's good though. They'll have that 
customer service available to them. So AptoG will do the first training session, which was done today, and they will have another training session. So is that two for each of the ambassadors and then one session for the building principals? It'll be two for everyone. So Every, two for everyone, everyone will have kind of a part A and a part B. And then there may also be additional training sessions as needed uh, as we move closer to the rollout and have the rollout. Uh, but those are the scheduled ones, two, two for every person who will be utilizing this, this system. That's the initial training. Uh, but we have the ability to schedule as many as we need to get folks to where they feel like they're ready. All right. And what I would like to see from those who are the ambassadors probably that are doing the, the training that they went through today and, and so on, I would love to see where our people are re-delivering. So we're using AppDG, of course, to get the, the first initial training. But a lot of these training sessions that may happen throughout the summer or when school starts back, I want us to be able to put it on our ambassadors who may have an, uh, see it as an opportunity for them to uh, provide professional development or professional learning um, in an area that they are comfortable with. So maybe if it's information technology or if it's just an ambassador that wants to take this on, I think it would be good for us to be able to have them to present because it helps them being able to present in the district and of course being able to go outside the district and present as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I think the last thing I would like to add on this one is um, it's good that, that we are moving forward with this. And I, I want to make sure that there is a resource link. So like if they need to get to uh, Let's Talk, there's an app on the page that leads them to that, that they can click on it. If they want to be able to become, because uh, I know I get a lot of communication about how do I become a part of this communicator thing. So I either forward it or they respond to it and get on there. But is there some type of link that is embedded within the website that they can go and sign up to be a part of the communicator and other different newsletters that they may have? And so uh, this is running into a lot right now, but Miss Long in counseling does a newsletter for the counselors and for stakeholders outside. I want to see that particular newsletter on our website as well so that in their counseling corner, if there's a place to go for resources, they're able to access the information that she sends out, which is full of scholarships and other things that are happening uh, in our district that's helpful to our uh, community stakeholders as well. So. Um, would love to see that happen. Oh, Ms. Long is right there. It's a great um, idea, and we actually had a conversation yesterday about uh, building in a, a page, you know, with resources for those that, that are looking to do things after high school, whether that be college or other career paths. All right. Well, I'm, I'm done. Any other uh, questions or comments? I just board? had a comment, Mr. Brown. Yeah, go ahead. Make sure your mic is on. If you've ever read the Spalding Collaborative email, you know, it goes and goes and goes and goes, but there are so many, what Mr. Brown was just talking about, there are so many links you can click on to get the help you need in our community, no matter what your needs are. I, I went through it the, with in entirety just this past week, one we get every Monday, I think. Yeah, from the Collaborative. I was, I haven't done that in a while, but I'm gonna tell you, I, I hope that what Mr. Brown's referring to, we can we can do and just put a lot of information on the, on our web pages to help our families and our and our employees too. So thank you, this is exciting, thank you. Thank you all, we're working, working to build that distinctive brand and we're thankful for your leadership that values that. Good, thank you so much, Mr. Pugh. My pleasure. All right, next up, uh, update Spur Substitute Management, Ms. Judy Battle. Good evening, Chairman Brown, board members, and Superintendent Simmons. Thank you for this opportunity to provide an update on the status of our substitute staffing services after our partnership with Spur. Of course, we will exercise our non-negotiables, we'll be professional, accountable, and communicate effectively. Our mission and vision, distinctive brand, strong leaders, and great schools. And when we look at our roadmap to success, 
This partnership with SPUR speaks specifically to organizational and operational efficiency, as well as high performing staff. And now we're also seeing more community engagement as we continue to recruit substitutes. And ultimately this leads to student achievement. So I wanted to provide an update. Um, we have to date 174 legacy substitutes. Our legacies were substitutes working through the school district. So now they've already transitioned over to SPUR. Uh, we had an influx of 150 new applications. There are 61 of those individuals currently in the onboarding process. 49 are in the qualifications phase, and qualifications is the same level of approval, meaning we've got to see your transcripts, you have to go through the criminal background check, you have to complete the training and the orientation to be a substitute. And so we have now 39 new, brand new subs that are working in the schools and are already on the payroll with SPUR. I wanted to give you an update on the numbers by category. So right now, if you look at those figures, we have the teacher category, paraprofessional category, as well as our school nutrition workers and our custodians. Um, right now, we have eight custodians in the qualifications phase, and that's usually one of the harder to fill positions. That question did come up recently. We have also bus monitors. Uh, we are getting bus monitors recruited and onboarding, as well as clerical support members. I wanted to provide for you a comparison um, over the past 21, 22, and 23 where we were in terms of fill rate. So we know 2021 was, we were still dealing with a lot of the COVID issues. So if we look at week one, um, the same time in comparison to week to week, if we look at 2021, we had about a 70% fill rate. 2022, we were on our spring break. But this year, we had a slight increase of uh, 70 0.8%. But something that I really wanted to point out to you that I think is very important, if you look at Thursday of week one, in 2021, we had a 57% fill rate. This year, we have 88%. So SPUR is really working, trying to get those positions filled. And ultimately, our goal is to be at 100%. I gave you a comparison of week two as well. Um, this is when we were off of spring break in 2022. So if you take a look that Monday, and Mondays and Fridays are challenges. Um, we just, we, it's just a struggle, but we're gonna get there. Um, but last year, that time in week two, we had about 53%, you know, almost 54% fill rate. But this year we came in with 76%. And you can do the comparisons across the board and see, but this, the Friday of week two, in 2022, we had 52%. So think about that, almost half of the positions were not filled, half were. But this year we had 84%, so I can see the improvement already. And I also included week three, just so you can see, I wanted you to have a full three week snapshot. Um, and again, you'll see the growth. In 2021, that 100%, I know we had some days built in where we had um, virtual days. So if it's a virtual day, we don't capture that data because we don't need to fill those vacancies. But those are just some comparisons for you to look at. I wanted you to see how we're moving along in this process. I've given you just, if you look at the bottom, and when, when you look at the very 2021 to 2022, this is the monthly average. We had a 59% fill rate. But this year, in the month of April, we are at 89%. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there with this work. I want to definitely do this, definitely give a special shout out to the school clerical support staff and the administrative workers. They did an exceptional job. We had the first payroll with SPUR, and with anything new, there are going to be some hiccups. Um, but the school-based clerical support team came down to central office, worked with SPUR, worked with HR, went through some additional training to make sure that we had those kinks worked out. So a special shout out to all of the school-based clerical support members. They did an exceptional job. If, if, this, if this is appropriate, okay. <laughs> okay, um, and so I just wanted to share with you some important dates. Weekly payroll for SPUR, and this was a benefit, right? Now substitutes are gonna get paid every Friday. Um, so they're gonna get paid every Friday. The first payroll was issued on April the 21st. Again, we had some hiccups. Once we recognized that there was a group of substitutes that did not get paid, 
Spur generated a second payroll that Monday morning. So as soon as they became aware of it, we worked through the problems and then they did a second payroll to get those individuals paid. The final payroll for Griffin Spalding County Schools for subs was last Friday. Um, we caught everyone up. We now all of the substitute payroll would be processed through Spur. Um, so we do have a client support, a client success representative. Her name is Nicole Spann. She works with SPUR. She has an office in HR because we're helping with those legacy transfers information that we have. We're getting that to her. So she is actually on site in the HR office. There's also a toll-free number and an email that people are able to use to get in touch with SPUR directly. Um, this is an additional benefit that we're looking into for substitutes, and it's an opportunity for substitutes to advance earned wages. I'll let you look at the video at your convenience, but it's just the way if people get paid on Friday, say if there's some kind of emergency, they need some of the money they've already earned on Wednesday, they will have that ability. It's not a payday advance. They will have had to earn this money, and then they can get that money in hand to get through some some emergency. So we're researching it. Uh, we intend to do a beta test to see how it works. We don't want anyone's income impacted. We just want to be comfortable um, before we push the button on this one. Um, again, this is just our partnership spur plus our district. Ultimately, we want to see happy children and happy employees. So what questions do you have for me? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard the presentation from our Executive Director of Human Resources. Are there any questions at this time from the members of this body? Ms. McDonald, you're recognized. I don't have a question, I just have a comment. I, I, I really appreciate this information because it, it, it tells us a lot about the work that you and your office and your associates are doing for us. And uh, it's very impressive and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Anybody to my left? All right. All right. All right. Thank you so much, you. Mrs. Battle. All right. Next item, GSCS Summer Opportunity Updates. Director Alston. Greetings, Chairman Brown, Board of Education members, and our own Dr. Simmons, Superintendent of our district. It is my pleasure to bring an update to you all uh, regarding our summer learning opportunity that we have themed Summer Lit Camp where we are getting lit for learning in Griffin Spalding County School District. Um, hoping that everybody is joining us. Of course, this is an extended learning opportunity for our scholars this summer to continue their academic growth, where we'll be focusing on reading, ELA, and math. Of course, we'll have some enrichment opportunities for our kids as well, particularly with the implementation of our Lego system. We're excited about the critical thinking skills that the kids will earn there, um, learn there, as well as problem solving. And so now, with that reminder, let's jump into the update. This is who we are in Griffin Spalding. We will be professional, we will hold each other accountable, and we will communicate effectively. This is our attempt at this this evening to be able to do just that. Our vision in Griffin Spalding is that we will have a distinctive brand, we will have strong leaders, and we will have great schools where each of us empower our students to, be graduate, to graduate college and career ready. Tonight, we want to focus on specifically our um, goal areas of family and community engagement and student achievement. We're excited about the work this summer. So I want to bring just some data update to the board tonight and allow you all to ask any questions regarding that. But I'm excited to bring these numbers to you. Um, here we go. Friendly reminders of our lit camp is scheduled for the month of June, which is different than last year. We did go into July. Those month, those dates are June 5th through June 29th. We are not in operation on June 19th, just a reminder there. We will be operating for four days of the week and Fridays we have tagged as our field trip days. So we're excited about that offering to our students as well. You'll also see the remainder of our schedule there in the first area of our slide. Just a reminder of our staffing requirements as well as the sites of services and the remaining data on this friendly reminder slide. Read all about it. Everybody ready? I am. We have been in the community. For those of you all that have not seen us out there, here we are. 
I'm hoping that somebody went by the Food Depot or by what we call Phillips here in Griffin. If you're a Griffinite, you know where I'm talking about. Um, as well as the billboards are out. Thank you so much, our communications department and Dr. Taylor, for making sure that we are out and about. Um, I have tried to fill Twitter up over the last few weeks, as well as my team has been on the phones day, night, and weekends. We have a form that we call the Blue Form, which is an additional form that we use to collect registrations for our community as well. Everybody on my team has a stack of blue forms in their car. Just in case we see you at the Kroger, at the gas station, at the Walmart, we'll make sure that we can serve. So if you see a blue form somewhere and it's filled out, get it to your federal programs department, please, because we want every child to be accounted for. So just here, you'll see before you uh, just some snippets of where we are in the community. Um, you'll also see us in Jerry's. Miss McDonald, we'll see you there soon, okay? All right, <laughs> here's some data um, from the 27th, just built on us collecting registrations from our community. We are ecstatic that our first priority is students. Um, communication has gone out to over a thousand families that started in February. We have really been flooding our parents with communication. I'm so excited about the partnership with our schools. We wouldn't be able to do it without the teamwork from both at the district level and within our schools as well. So from that, at the time of last week, once we kind of drilled down the data, making sure we didn't have duplicates of forms and our kids were those true kids that were invited, we had 371 registrants as of last Thursday. Before I left the office today, we were up to 428 kids that had registered, plus another 70 on the waiting list that we're going to push in as well. So we're excited about this number, and we still have a couple of weeks to go. Get the word out. Help us get the word out. If you need some flyers, we got some extra flyers. Put it on the side so y'all understand. So this is where we are. This is us. We are Griffin. And so we want to make sure that we're getting the word out to the community. So please help us to do that. We still have more slots to go. We have the capacity of serving 950 children this summer. We want to fill those slots with our elementary and middle school students. We're excited about the curriculum. The curriculum team has been very, very in, um, heavy on the input of making sure that we have what we need curriculum-wise that we have what we need Lego-wise. The kids are excited about that. They're excited about the field trips for free on Fridays, y'all. And the parents are talking about it. We're on the phones. Let me show you those persons on the phones. There they are at the bottom of that slide. That's from the time we start at 9 to the time we clock out at 4.30. Somebody's on the phone calling a parent to make sure no child is left. We don't want any child not to have the opportunity to participate. So this is where we are. We're excited about where we are compared to where we have been. And we're just looking forward to this being a great year, um, the great summer for us. Although we're off on Fridays on the schedule, you'll find that the teachers and the staff that's working this program will be there all week long. And so we're excited about making sure our kids have a great start to next school year. And that's all I have for now. Any questions for me? Date from Director Austin for our summer is lit camp. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns? All right, so if you don't mind, Ms. McDonald, let me go ahead and get mine out, and then you can, you can alley-oop it over to you. All right, so Dr. Austin, how are you? I'm well, Chairman. Great, great, it's always a pleasure for you to present before the board and to get a better understanding of the work that you're doing, how you are serving the families here in Griffin Spalding. Just a couple questions. Yes, sir. Uh, we've been in communication as it relates to a lot of the plans and everything that's going on. And the day that we had spoke, you were having a meeting with uh, those interested persons who were either going to serve as like the facility lead mm -hmm. or the principal for summer school. Um, how many staff members do we have, I guess, that have committed to summer school um, for this summer? I'm excited to say we have over 100 educators that have applied and interviewed for the positions, which is more than we have on Slated for Serving Kids. Yet, we're going to be able to infuse as many educators in the classrooms to get those small classes for students to have that personalized learning this summer. So we are well on our way. I'm excited to be able to report that, that I get emails, calls, at the front door, knocking on the door. We want to be a part of this summer. So we're excited about that. We have over 100 that have applied and interviewed. And thank you, our HR department couldn't have done it without you. So thank you so very much for all of the work there. 
So it shows like there's great collaboration going on. So you have 100 people that have applied. Yes, sir. But no one has been hired. Uh, essentially, nobody's been turned away at this point. All right. So Chair. all 100 have. We're going to find slots. We're going to find somewhere for we're them gonna to go. We're going to find slots. All right, y'all, A lot hear of times, y'all hear that out there? We're, we're going to find, find slots. Okay. All right. And then the next question uh, that I have is. So you, you said that there were 751 who have not registered yet. And yes, I sir. understand that you, your team, are making phone calls from, you know, early in the morning to mm -hmm. their, the last time that they're here in the afternoon to get ready to go home. How many scholars or how many families have been contacted uh, within that 751 that have moved to actually register for summer school? That 428 number that I shared with you to just a few moments right. ago, that's how many out of the 1122 that have actually registered okay. through all forms that has been moving to right. the list. So I, I know that you've had other efforts of mm -hmm. being out in the community, so I just want to know how many came through the actual phone calls through your staff. Oh, we have made phone calls to all 1,122 families. Okay. We've emailed all 1,122 families, and we have also sent the letters. So all of those efforts together culminated the number that we have. Great. So I can't say that any one of those was the trick to get that 428. All of that culminated the numbers that we're getting, plus the school efforts. I can't leave out the schools that have also Correct. made calls, that's also sent home letters through um, through the kids' book bags, as well as the schools. So there's just there's a lot. Of, of effort that's out there chairman all right and last two questions um if you may indulge me yes sir. how many do we ha how many substitutes are we are going to hire for summer school that 100 number that we're talking about could they're going to be in a role whether it's substituting whether it's in the classroom each day okay. and that is depending on the number of students that are registered that's why we're pushing so hard to get all of our kids into those seats all right and then the last question i think is very important do you have a schedule of the of the parent meeting dates so far? Uh, yes, sir. We have confirmed the parent meeting date, which is the May sixteenth, the Tuesday of this month, mm -hmm. at the auditorium at five thirty p.m. All right. Will there be any other meetings for parentals? No, sir. There won't be another group meeting. It'll be at the time when we start the programs. That information will be sent home then. All right. I have no further questions, Ms. McDonald. You're recognized. Thank you. Pleasure to see you. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's D E A D D. Miss Austin, it's always a pleasure to see you. I, I think I shared with you when we did the vending machine book at book machine at Atkinson that your spirit it just speaks to me and I, I just really appreciate your energy. I publicly wanted to thank your team that is on the front of your um, you, Dr. Taylor, Dr. Greer, and Ms. Phillips. Who is Ms. Phillips? Is she here? Okay, I just wanted to publicly thank all of you. I have had the pleasure and excitement of seeing your Twitter feed, and I have just enjoyed reading every one of thank them. And I just wanted to say thank you to you and your team, what you're doing, and I expect this summer school to be probably none other it's going to be really awesome. I'd like to volunteer to go on some of those Friday field trips. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. Did we get that recorded? We got that recorded. We'd love to have all the board members attend any Fridays. And everybody, Mr. Holmes, any Fridays. If love you, to have you guys there on day one in the summer school. If you lunch, I'm sure Mr. Holmes will go. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wheeler, I think we can make that happen, can't we? Thank you, Mr. Wheeler. But we would love to have a day one. For our summer schools, just like we had day one in the district, yeah, nice. that would be amazing yeah. um, if we could get you all to just join us on, on one on of those first days in those six yeah. schools. would be great to be yeah, able to have that. Right, Adam? We can work that out. All and right. I think I'll also share Thank with you. Dr. Taylor, I, I want to see some of those Lego lessons, too. Yes, I think that would be pretty cool to, to witness. So yes, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Any other all right. Uh, Leader Holmes, any questions about the food for the – for, for, for summer camp <laughs> right she is on it I love it yes <laughs> I, no it's perfect <laughs> Mr. Doss anything all but, right well no further questions or any comments concerns but Thank Mr. You so Holmes I do speak the truth is that correct <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you so very okay. much okay thank you so much we greatly appreciate it all right next up 
Student Support Services Updates. Dr. Lisa Moore, welcome. Hi. This is taller than me. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, Chairman Brown, board members, and Superintendent Simmons. I am here today to give you a quick update, but before I do, we are um, sure we're going to use our non-negotiables, be professional, be accountable, communicate effectively. Our mission, of course, is distinctive brands, strong leaders, great schools, and we, of course, want to empower each student to graduate college and career ready. Um, today, we're going to be focusing on our objective to provide effective and efficient operations, and then um, our priority, of course, is to execute cohesive systems and innovative practices. And that's actually what I've been working on this year with our department, is to put in um, policies, procedures, and processes uh, for our central registration to make it work effectively. Um, just to bring you up to date, as of um, the end of April, pre-K registration, we had two sessions. We had an employee registration session and a non-employee registration session. We had 454 pre-K students that enrolled, and um, I'm happy to say that Cowan Elementary, Beaverbrook, and Moore are full. So we are working towards getting the other schools full, but these three schools are full. Excuse me. More, more elementary, yes. So we enroll 454. Um, for kindergarten, um, the, and that date, I'm sorry, I should say April 27th, we so far have registered 108 students. And I want to let you know some of the things that we did. For kindergarten, there, last year there was a cutoff period for registration with kindergarten. This year we decided not to do a cutoff period so that it would alleviate a mad rush in the summer. So once we started this window, that window for kindergarten will continue on. Um, for general registration, that's the year-round registration, we've enrolled 2,600 students or 2,696 students um, so far year-round. So our total registration from August to April was 3,258. Our total current enrollment, though, is 9,497 students, and that does include pre-K. Um, it does not meet our goal of 10,000, but we're working towards that. But I did want to give you that information of what our enrollment currently is. So some of the processes that we changed, because again, I want to, that was one of the things that I saw that we needed to work on in student services. Um, after the pre-K window, only one registrar works that process to maintain enrollment order. We want to make sure those students that enroll first get those first slots. So only one registrar will work the pre-K window, uh, work pre-K registration after the window closes. Um, the robo, we did a robocall this year with pre-K registration, um, thanks to Ms. Bieber and Mr. Pugh, and that was highly effective. We got um, so many pre-K registrations after they did the robocall, so we've asked them to also do the robocall for the kindergarten registration. All right, again, like I told you a few minutes ago, there's no registration in for kindergarten, and so our thought was if we don't end the kindergarten registration, then they'll be registra reg registering now, and they won't run in in the summer and then back up the registration like we saw last summer. And then lastly, one of the things that they were doing prior to me coming was the screener was done at the central registration for kindergarten or the pre-screener. What I asked the principals was to let the pre-screener be done at the school level. Um, what that helped with is we didn't have to pull a Parapro out of the school. Parapros are very, very important um, and they have tasks they need to do. So we kept from pulling them out of the school and just sitting at central registration waiting on kindergarten um, registration. And another thing that helped that with was we did not have to um, have appointments for kindergarten screeners, I'm sorry, kindergarten registration if we weren't doing the screeners at our building. That way we could be registering more kindergarten registrations at that time. And so those were some of the changes that we've made. I'm um, hopeful that that will help for the summer registration and we'll be able to task with more um, Register, being able to register more efficiency, more efficient, excuse me, this summer. Any questions? 
All right, board members, we have heard the presentation from Dr. Lisa, Lisa Moore with the Student Services Update. Are there any questions, comments, concerns at this time for Dr. Moore? Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Moore. We greatly appreciate you. Thank you. Chairman Brown. What, what's our I'm sorry, come back. Leader Holmes has a what's, question. What's our capacity for our uh, kindergarten? I want to say it was 800. Let me check um, with Dr. Bearden, and I will get that. I will eat that, email that to you. Okay. Um, do you know? Pre K. Okay. Yes, I will check. I, I'm believing, but I wanted to make sure I know okay. Okay. the exact number. And I will email that to you, Mr. Holmes. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, we are now getting ready for our fiscal year 24 budget and millage rate presentation. Coming from none other, Mr. Moneybag Yo himself, our CFO, Mr. Byron Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, board members. I'm going to try to match the, I was going to come up here and try to match the energy of Barbara Austin, but I'm going to tone Can't it do down. It. I'm, going to, <laughs> I'm going to tone it down just a lot. Y'all have heard me speak so many times. I'll try to be brisk and, and get you through this. So uh, good to see you again. Uh, it, really, it's been a quick turnaround. You know, we, we talked a lot at our retreat last week, and then we had a, uh, a public hearing last week and a presentation. So let me just kind of, before we start, tell you where we're at. Uh, so you've had two public hearings so far on our FY24 budget, and then you adopted the FY24 tentative budget. And as I explained before, that was uh, really a compliance item that we have to adhere to in school districts and then run that in the newspaper. That was in the Griffin Daily News. I think it was uh, Thursday's paper of last week. So we've met all those timelines. We're back in here tonight. Originally, it was just going to be a kind of a redo of that same presentation, but we kind of changed it up a little bit to kind of give you a little bit more millage rate information to kind of prep you for that discussion. So we'll talk about that a little bit tonight, a little bit of budget, and then we'll come back on May the 16th with a public hearing for the final budget. We'll ask you to adopt the final budget on May the 16th. So that's kind of our chronological order. So as we get started tonight, I will be uh, communicating effectively to you, and I will measure that when we're done to see how many questions you have. Uh, after the presentation. Uh, on our vision, we are really after brand awareness. Uh, that's one of the things we've been talking about in Cabinet. We hope we'll be able to see that through the budget that we present. Obviously, every expenditure that we have uh, is the ultimate goal to empower each student to graduate college and career ready. Um, on our roadmap to success, I normally point you to that bottom line for aligning resources. Uh, and again, most of the things we're talking about is uh, getting operational and organizationally efficient in our operations. So let me start by just going through some a glossary of terms. Now, you, you all have been with me. I'm com about to complete my third year here in Griffin. And we've, we've gone over these terms in each millage rate presentation. So I'll go over them this time. We, we may share them again with you when we get to that in the summer. But uh, ho if you have any questions, feel free to ask me tonight, but we'll go over them again. But ad valorem tax on our first bullet uh, is simply the property tax that's on uh, the taxpayers' bills when they come in Spalding County. And normally about two-thirds of that is for school taxes. Anywhere in the state, it's normally about two-thirds of the tax bill. Um, so we always get questions of that. Uh, just uh, normally the tax bills go out and they're due, uh, I believe it's November 15th here in the county. Several years now that's been extended for, for various reasons. So that's communicated with the tax commissioner's office. Everybody in the county, there was a law approximately 10 years ago that was passed. The state uh, mandated that all counties have to provide a property tax assessment, not bill, but assessment notice to everybody in the county. I do not think those have gone out as of yet. So once those go out to tell you what your value of your property is, then you have 45 days that you can file an appeal of that assessment. So that's just the start of the process. Okay, so all that's a lot to say that ties back into ad valorem tax of what the school district benefits from at the end. Certified tax digest will just simply be the amount of monies that Ms. Hollum's, uh, Sylvia Hollum's office tax commission will certify with the state uh, to the total value of the tax digest for the school district. Levying authority is simply that you all have the ability to levy taxes as long as we abide by certain compliance rules with hearings, et cetera. Uh, once you come up with a recommended millage rate that you adopt, we still have to take that to the county commissioners and have them ratify that. That's a procedural item that, that you will see if you attend one of those meetings after our meetings are done. 
when we talk about the value of a meal, and this fluctuates from different counties in the state, so almost $2 million is the value of a meal here in Spalding County. So there's a slide I've got later. Uh, if you take 16 meals times 2 million, you get 32 million. That's about the number, amount of taxes that we're bringing in for ad valorem tax purposes. It's, it's complicated more than that. I'm trying to make it simple, but that fluctuates every year based on the tax, uh, the assessed value that goes out for property. So the value of a meal is about 1.9 to $2 million. Millage rate, Spalding County, 16.742. Uh, when I say CY up here, it's calendar year. Uh, normally those bills are based on calendar year, and you hear me talk about fiscal year more than you do calendar year, but I'm using most of the CY in this term. Uh, we will be proposing at this point 16.742 to leave that the same rate. So if that brings in a little bit more money, we'll be required to have the three public hearings. So go ahead and just be, be aware that that will be part of the process. Millage equivalent, uh, there's a form that uh, we have to uh, get signed that tells um, if you were to roll your millage rate back, for example, here on the slide, I'm on the bottom bullet here, 1.754 mills is what it could have been reduced last year uh, to bring in the same amount of money. So by leaving it the rate the same, we left it at 16.7. I think the rate could have been reduced to a little bit under 15. I'll show you that in just a second. So there's a millage rate equivalent that uh, that's what this term's referring to. Net assessed value, this looks this 1.9 figure looks similar to the other, except this is billion. So $1.98 billion is what the, the net assessed value of the property in the county of Spalding is. That's your businesses, your personal property, all that stuff that goes into for Avalorum tax, your vehicles, et cetera, that's still on the digest, totals up to almost $2 billion. Again, recommending authority is the Griffin Spalding Board of Education. And rollback rate, I mentioned this a while ago. So uh, in this little formula here that I'm, that's on the bottom of the screen here, uh, 16.742, you could have rolled it. The rollback rate would have been 14.988. We left it the same. The difference was 1.754. Therefore, we were required to have three public hearings. Okay. This chart, uh, the next chart, uh, we went ahead. We'll have to run this in the newspaper um, prior to adopting a millage rate. We went ahead and prepped it for the data that we will get. So the yellow column is obviously blank because we don't have that information yet. Uh, so you can see on 2022, where I was talking earlier about $32 million, if you just come in the 22 column over to the right, you'll see approximately $33 million is roughly what we were talking about with taxes on the digest. And of that, you would have to deduct the tax commissioners 2.5%, so seven dollars or $800,000, somewhere in that range. So we would be netting out somewhere in the $32 million range, what I was telling you earlier. And also on top of that, we have to budget for delinquent taxes. If somebody can't afford to pay the taxes at the due date and maybe they get on a payment plan with the tax commissioner's office, that would just you know delay uh, when those taxes would come in. This next form is really, it's, it's a form Dr. Simmons is required to sign once you all adopt the millage rate. And I'm just gonna show you the bottom right of this form. It kind of speaks to what I was saying a while ago. If you'll see those two rates on the bottom right that I was just referring to, uh, it's a difference of 11.70%, and that's the item that by law we have to run in the newspaper to say that there's a tax increase. Uh, and again, I'll talk to you more in, when we get to the hearings about uh, how confusing that article can be. If you can remember, uh, Adam, I mentioned this yesterday in full cabinet meeting. I told them that you and I have already got a calendar item. Suzanne knows that from the calendar that we're going to go down and meet with the newspaper. Uh, this year to make sure that what they run in the paper is our expectation. But we've been lying in this meeting up for a year ago. Is if you'll remember, we had an ad and we asked them to redact, redact that and print a retraction or whatever it was. And, and it was fine, but it was a little bit confusing, so we want to avoid that this year. So we've already got that lined up. I showed you this last year. Uh, we've updated this. So our 10-year millage rate trend uh, you can see that Spalding County, we leave the rate the same, it would be four years in a row, 16.7. Uh, now, I wasn't here in 2014, but it did get up to 20 at one point. So who, I, I took a poll at a meeting yesterday, it was a couple of people in the audience that, was, that lived in Spalding County. So the people that are here, I don't know if you remember it, was it close to 20 at one time? You remember that? Okay. So we're at 16.7 now. Just know, you know, by law, you can go up to 20 mils. Uh, if you can go higher, and I'll show you the next slide, a couple that do, you have to have legislative approval for that. Uh, 
and, and in addition to your maintenance and operations millage rate, you, some school districts also have an additional millage rate for bonds. So you, so you could have 16.742, you could have a bond millage rate, and you could have an East Blast 1% sales tax. There's some of that in the state. So uh, you'll see in a second how we kind of, in our RESA area, I'll, I'll show you this slide. I, I included all of the districts in our RESA area. This is the rate that they're observing right now. So I updated the slide. Um, kind of look at that a second. There are a few lower than us. Uh, there are several higher than us. Fayette, obviously, I pointed them out because they're at 19.15. And that's in addition to having all the retail, the property tax, you know, wealth of that uh, and more students, et cetera. And that's still almost two and a half to three mils higher than us. So 16.7, you can see there's a few that's lower than us that's in our RESA district as well. Uh, you can see Muskogee down that has a lot of the Fort Benning type income, et cetera. They have an exception. They're over 20. Rockdale's at 21. Clayton and, and uh, Henry, I believe, are at, at uh, 20, which are right around us. So that, that's, that part of the presentation was millage rate. Uh, before I go into a little bit more of the budget, is there any question at this point on, on those slides? That's all I have for the millage rate itself. And again, that was designed to prep you for what might be coming. Go ahead and give you a snapshot. All right, are there any board members that have a question as it relates to the millage rate presentation from? All right, go ahead, Mr. Doss. No question, just a, a comment. I didn't know that one of the stands that GSBA is going to be making is that they clean up the verbiage um, or wanting to clean up the verbiage on what has to be presented within the papers so that people are not as confused as they usually are when it comes to the millage rate. I'm just making sure that you are aware that it hasn't happened yet, but yeah. that is one of the stances that they're taking. Thank you. All right, here, none. Go ahead, Mr. Jones. All right, and so I cut down to just a few slides on budget, and you all have seen this. This slide has not changed from our retreat last week. Same one, 109 million, uh, close to 110 million, and, and this is spending. I wanted to just make a few comments. So the, this has not changed. To, to repeat what we ran in the newspaper, this is just general fund. So we are right now looking at about a $7.5 million deficit. Now, I want to make some comments about that because it may be confusing for anybody that might be look at, watching online or in the audience. So for three years now, we've been deferring salaries. The first year when I first got here, we were just doing the assistant principal salaries. And all that means is we got clearance from our ESSER 1, ESSER 2, ESSER 3 funds, some combination of them, to defer salaries over under a term called continuity of services. We had approval for that. So we knowingly moved three million over the first year, six and a half million over the second year, and then this year we're in, we've got another pot of money we moved over to grant funds for principal and AP salaries. Um, it didn't mess with our, you've heard me talk about our ramp plan where we have to make sure we're equitable at schools. So by doing that with the administration, we didn't have to kind of fool with messing with that formula for our ramp plan. So if you add all up, I just said, that's about $15 million. So for our reserve, which is the fund balance dash uh, beginning number, when we ended last year, remember the audited fund balance is 36 million. That's higher than Fayette, that's higher than Coweta. I mean, we, we have planned for this to be that way. So uh, we do know that we're gonna need to dip into fund balance the coming year uh, at seven and a half. Now I will tell you on the back side of that, uh, and Dr. Simmons, I don't know if you wanna say anything or you can agree with my comment here, but we've tasked executive directors and all staff in the school district that have a tie-in to the general fund budget to go back to their budgets, propose solutions, trimming, uh, do you really need that? Could you be more efficient? Is your estimate too high? Or is it something we could defer to East Bloss? Does it qualify? Is it something that we could pay for in June because we've got savings in this year? All that's going on right now. And for the people that are here, several of you have already responded to me by email, and I appreciate that. I won't name you, but there's about five of you, I think, that have already emailed me with some questions, how you may want to look at this or whatever. So we're doing that, and hopefully we can trim that down some by we get back in here on the, on the 16th. And in addition, I'll look at another revenue estimate and see if we can have a little bit more on the local side. We won't get any more money on the state side. We already know those numbers. So, uh, but anyway, that, I just want you to know that that's already uh, something that we have uh, communicated actually yesterday, and that's ongoing. These two sheets have not changed. I took all the yellow off. Uh, these are the same as last time. I won't go over them, but these are the, really the high-level ad items. 
Some of it is our ARP money, which is not affecting the general fund, you know, the big item retention supplement. So people who are in Griffin Spalding that come back next year will receive up to $3,000 of a retention incentive uh, paid out in three increments. Uh, that will be in addition to the $2,000 salary increase for state certified scale, certified staff and step increases. Um, so I, again, I'm not going to go through these. If you all want to, if you all have a question, we have added good, better, best to this. I think Mr. Doss, you'd ask me about that. We have, uh, if you, you know, the request column, which is the third from the left over, that's the one that we'll be uh, recommending. Uh, it's not always the best because, for example, we have an item in here for, uh, let's see, number 11, administrative deans. If we had all the money in the world, we'd go over to the best and put one in each elementary at a cost of $75,000 each, it'd be 825,000. But we're only gonna request that in three schools, which will be three of our five focus schools uh, for the UVA initiative that we've talked about. So we'll be recommending the good on that. So even though that bottom uh, total on the left says 15.3 million. Uh, again, a, a majority of that's ESSER three ARP funds. So in summary, again, you've seen this slide, 176 student days, that's down one from last year. Uh, health insurance, again, $19,000 approximately if somebody chooses the health insurance. So that's, that's, a, that's a, a situation we can't control locally at this point to my knowledge, uh, but we do have that budgeted uh, we've talked about teacher allotments before and how they've gone down on the general education side, gone up on the special education side, kind of a, a wash in a way on that side. Uh, and our timeline, uh, the 16th again, we'll have our, our uh, board meeting, we'll have a public hearing, and we'll get that stuff out to you on the times. Uh, and I plan to meet with the tax commissioner, tax assessor, owner about the 19th of May. June 2nd, the follow-up meeting, and then some to be determined. This was kind of how our schedule laid out last year. We had two hearings for millage on one day. We had a third on another day and then called a meeting shortly after on the same day to get that approved. Then we communicated with the uh, county commissioner and then the, the date for Ms. Hollums to have that to the state is supposed to be August 1st and she can get an extension on that. That's what the due date is. So with that, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my presentation, sir. Thank you so much for your due diligence and work in compiling both of these reports for the military rate and uh, the fiscal year 24 budget. Are there any questions or comments or concerns from the body? Leader Holmes, you recognize? Joan, if you don't mind, uh, give us a brief synopsis of, uh, I, I don't know if anyone else has gotten a question, but I think maybe in this form, uh, and communicate how the, the, the fund the governor uh, is going to give how that's going to be distributed in their in their uh, paychecks or sal is this the, the certified salary increase right. to that okay right. so yeah that will be put into our uh, QBE uh, formula for our formula earnings so we will earn about 61 million next year and we get uh, one twelfth of that every month that's our revenue coming in from the state uh, Ms. Battle's office, along with finance, will do an individual uh, salary sheet on each certified employee. Uh, and to answer your question, it'll be one twelfth. It, it'll be distributed evenly. And for those employees, obviously, that two thousand dollars will be built into the minimum salary schedule. And then the local supplement that you all adopt <coughs> will go up proportionally because it's based on a percentage basis. So they'll they'll get a little bit more from that as well, whatever percentage. That's kind of a bell curve a little bit on our local supplement. So it's not just the same all the way through the whole. It goes up and down based on years of service. So uh, I hope that answers your question. It'll be it'll be distributed evenly through the 12 months of their salary. Well, not not so much my question. <laughs> I want I want those that fit in that category to understand that it's not going to be a lump sum payment or right. whatever because uh, some some just didn't understand how that was going to be handled. So right. I so just wanted you to address it in this public forum. Yeah. yeah, so we got that going on, which is just regular payout. And then again, the, the retention incentive will be three payments. So that will actually be something that will be, and we'll make sure that's community. I think Ms. Battles had that in the communicator already, or we'll probably have that going again soon. So we'll make sure that gets put out effectively. All right, Any anybody else? All right, hearing none, thank you so much, Mr. Jones. Last, well not really last but not least, but um, would like to call up the good folks from Sun City, the Parent Academy. 
would love for you to just come. Uh, Ms. McDonald is going to introduce you, but I would love for all of you to go ahead and make your way to the podium so you can just tell us your name and what you enjoy most about the Parent Academy once Ms. McDonald uh, um, introduces you. To my, to my Sun City neighbors and my constituents, welcome. Um, I ran into Ms. Ponder, Chandra, is it Sh is Chandra Ponder, uh, is kind of oversees the Parent Academy and they um, help Atkinson Elementary. These are my neighbors from Sun City. And, and we have Ms. Pope, who is the president of AES. Ms. Pope, raise your hand. And Ms. Ponder, I'm going to allow you to introduce your, uh, your peers there, and uh, we just welcome you with open arms and, and so glad you're here. Ms. Ponder is back with us today because uh, she presented to us back in the fall. <laughs> I ran into Ms. Ponder a couple of three weeks ago out at, at uh, Sun City and she was telling me what all has, has transpired since back in the fall when they were here to give us a, a brief update and I just felt like we needed to hear from you guys again. So welcome. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Chairman Brown, Superintendent Simmons, all of you, all of the board members and other honored guests that are here with us today. We are so excited to be a part of Griffin Spalding County School District and you allowing us to use our skills and expertise to help the students. Um, I'm laughing too because I know uh, Chairman Brown knows why they're laughing at me. My husband is his height. <laughs> So <laughs> it's always a joke that I'm the shortest one in the room, married to the tallest one in the room. So that's how that They said she knows goes. how to talk to tall people. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So um, I want to introduce my team and also introduce the president of the ACES Charter Club that exists in Sun City. And that is the club that we operate through. There are 50 two charter clubs in Sun City. There's a thing that says, if, you're li if you live in Sun City and you're not having any fun, that's your fault. <laughs> so um, I want to introduce her first and foremost, and that is Mrs. Ina Pope, who is the president of ACES. Raise your hand if I call your name. Okay, starting over at this end, we have Grethel Hogue. Next to her is Dr. Alexis Smith. Next to her, Dr. Elena Anderson, Elena Anderson. Next to her, we have Darlene Carter Blunt. Hey. Next to her, last and certainly not least, we have Karen Harvey. And I, and I, I again, am Chandra Ponder. But um, we wanted to come, thank you, thank you. Um, we wanted to come today and just basically update you on our year, the experiences that we have had as uh, people volunteering through our Parent Academy at Atkinson Elementary. Um, you may not know this, or some of you might because you were here at our first presentation. We have represented here over 350 years of education experience. So we have represented principals, assistant principals, coordinators, um, technology people. We have uh, people from the corporate sector who have all volunteered their time, energy, and efforts to make Atkinson Elementary School a joyous place and a wonderful place for learning. Um, Ms. Campbell graciously accepted us this year into her school. We've been able to have monthly monthly sessions where we go in every month and at that time we do a workshop with parents and then we also distribute books to parents because one of our beliefs is that not only are there food deserts they're book deserts and the children cannot have an opportunity if they're only getting opportunities to read at home and not have an opportunity to read, I'm sorry, read at school and not have an opportunity to read in their homes. So the more books that we place in their site and then train their parents on how to utilize those books and materials with their students, we believe that overall we're going to get a better product and that at the end of the day, they will be college and career ready. 
I'm saying that and I'm having flashbacks. I'm a retired uh, Georgia school employee. So I'm like, this is just making me have flashbacks. And I'm sure many of you are from your districts. We have people from all over the country and all over the world in this organization. People have taught internationally. They've taught in the north, the south, the east, and the west. So they bring a lot of vision and a lot of experience to the work that we're also doing. So right now I'm going to ask, um, as I said, um, Ina Pope to come and just give a couple of words in reference to ACES and what it is in our community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a little taller than Shonda, so. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to tell you just briefly a little bit about ACES. We are a charter club that's located in Sun City. We are, last count, 254 members strong. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about these people and the organist and the unit standing behind me. ACES is divided basically into three components. We are educational, social, and cultural, African American open to everyone, and we have a smattering of everyone in our club as well. I became president um, a little over a year ago, and I was approached by this group behind me who said, we're going to work, no, who told us, <laughs> they didn't ask, they told us, we're going to work in the schools, and we're going to work in more, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we said, okay, and they started, and we watched them in amazement, uh, energetic, intelligent, very concerned about the students. The 234-member organization is totally behind them, manpower, financially, and anything else they need. And I'm very proud and happy to represent them. As Mrs. Pope said, uh, in ACES, there are subcommittees. One of them is the Education Committee. So now I would like to introduce the co-chair that chairs with me um, on that component. Underneath that heading is the SCP Parent Academy. And that person is Karen Harvey. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. We are indeed delighted to be here this evening. Uh, the work we're doing is almost like ministry for us. We feel so dedicated and committed to doing this work, and it is delight. It is a delight for us. And uh, Chairman Brown, you asked us to say what we like most about the Parent Academy. It's uh, the ability to serve and to see the fruits of our labor. We, we have had so many wonderful experiences and, and reception from the parents and from their students, and we are so delighted to have that opportunity. Also to that point of why we do this and what we like the most, I would have to say that what I like most is being a change agent and working with a dynamic team. No is not in our vocabulary. We are totally a team. There is nothing that we ask, request, that we are not given, and people just rally. They come together, and you'll see that as we go on in this presentation, um, how Sun City itself and the greater community has gotten behind us. So what I would have to say, hmm, to whom is given, much is required. So what we've done as a group is heeded that call, heard that cry, and put into action and brought to life what it means when you recognize that you've been given a lot, and now the goal is to give back. If many of you know who Abraham Maslow is, Maslow says that after a point in life, it's not all about you. You look around the community, you look around the world, and you say, before I leave this planet, how can I make a difference? And we are exercising and it, trying to be an example of that thought process. So the mission that you see on the board says, 
The purpose of the Sun City Peachtree Parrot Academy is to serve as a resource that fosters and enhances parental involvement and serves as a support for families. Okay. Um, in our initial planning stages uh, when we were organizing, we did a lot of research to find out <clears throat> what the needs were for uh, parents being more active and involved in the work of their students and, and how that uh, conveyed in the way of success. And I wanted to share this research with you because it really guides our thinking and all the work that we do. And this is from the National Coalition for Parent Involvement in Education. And it says, and I apologize reading, but it says no matter their income or background, Students with involved parents are more likely to have higher grades and test scores, attend school regularly, and have better social skills. They show improved behavior and adapt well to school. And we believe that, and that's, that's sort of the foundation of what we do and why we're so committed to it. Also, if you'll look at the uh, board, you will see our committee itself. So this is representative of the people that are on our team, but we also have some other members that are actively involved. So uh, when you see us or when they see us coming and they see us in these white shirts, they know that we are members of the Parent Academy and we're there to do work to support and to help our parents and help out in that stead. Um, so this year, we have accomplished a lot of things. We do have monthly meetings or sessions at the school, and we do that, but in addition to that, we do other things. We participated in the open house in August, and we were happy to see and to say that um, Chairman Brown was there. He gave us one of your medallions, which just kind of uh, gave us an, a, a burst of energy as we started off on this journey for the year. So we earned an award that we consider an award from the school district from the beginning. And during that time, we decided that we needed to survey parents to find out what their needs would be and the areas that they felt that they needed support with their children to make them successful. So we created a parent survey. We got the information. We collected the data. Um, we did uh, disaggregate the data. So we used that as a springboard or as um, a method of deciding how we could best serve parents for that year. The other thing that was very interesting about that survey, we asked some very, very difficult questions. One of the questions that we asked was, what is the thing that is most fearful of you, for you as a parent in terms of what can happen to your child? We got responses from pre-K pre and kindergarten parents who said, I'm most afraid that they're going to drop out of school and join a gang. So that just lets you know the level of importance that we have with this work that we all do in reference to children. And we're really looking forward to the new principal. We are honored to meet you. We hope that you, know, you see us as valuable and will accept us in your school because all of us make a team. And no child can make it with just one or two people helping them. It truly takes a village to make a difference. So if you'll look at the other. Oh. <laughs> if you look at the other months, in September, we were at Grandparents' Day. Um, we spearhead different topics. So a taste of literacy is what I um, took care of for the month of September, and it was a workshop. We had another workshop um, after that that went on in February that continued that work because we, um, they had a taste of literacy also at the school, so we were springboarding off of what they were doing. In November, if Grethel Ho would come over, she could give us an update on her Fun With Math workshop. Thank you. Good, good afternoon, everyone. I had just as much fun as the parents and children did. It was a pleasure just seeing the parents involved. I shared the standards, the different um, components of math, and at each table I had activities for them and I would give them time to work some problems, solve some things, measure some things, and then they had a few minutes, now it's time to rotate to the next table. So I think they really enjoyed that hands-on activity 
where they had a chance to do all the activities in the room and they, some of them had their children with them and other children were in the workshops with the parents. So the principal made it very easy for us to have our parents just to themselves if they wanted where the children also had activities. And in the program where the children were in the classrooms with the educators, they were working on math too. So that was very exciting. And just to have the parents kind of tap into their previous experiences with math when they were younger. Hey, is this coming back to you? Yeah, now I understand it. And it is fun because a lot of people are turned off to math. So it ended up being fun for everyone. No, not generalist. So I teach all the, I was teaching all the subjects. <laughs> I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to participate. In December, uh, we were uh, scheduled to do uh, a workshop, but there was a miscommunication, and we ended up doing a book distribution instead. And we are so excited because every time we have a workshop, we make sure that parents uh, and students are are made um, aware of the fact that literacy is important to us and we have books available to be distributed. And it's always so exciting to see the joy and the excitement that they have. They can't believe that they can choose the books that they want and as many as they want. We've been very fortunate. We're gonna tell you a little bit more about the numbers that we've been able to uh, um, collect and what that translates into in terms of dollars. So that was in December and that was our first uh, just book distribution. In January, I was the facilitator for a workshop that is based on a, a national bestseller by Adele Faber, and it's been a national bestseller since the early 80s. The title of the workshop is How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk. We had a wonderful, highly interactive workshop with parents. It was amazing to me how parents were able to open up about some of the challenges that they have in talking to their children. And we were very fortunate because in many cases we had moms and dads there together. Not only did they open up about the challenges that they had talking to their children, they realized that a lot of the communication skills that we covered in that workshop helped them to communicate with one another as well. And they talked about the challenges they had in talking to one another. It was so successful that at the end of the workshop, the parents didn't want to leave, and they formed a parent group to continue to communicate with one another beyond the workshop. So we were very excited about that. And I'll let somebody else talk about the tornado relief in February. <laughs> okay, we, as all of you know, Griffin, Spalding County was devastated by a terrible tornado. We considered ourselves very blessed because it did not seem that even a leaf on a tree was touched in Sun City. I guess they said these older people, you know, we just gonna, we're gonna skip them. But we were blessed to have that happen. But, you know, having said that, we also realized that all around us there was devastation. And one of the most devastated areas was around Atkinson Elementary School, which is the school that we serve. So what we did was we did put out the call, just help. And we decided after talking to the principal that the best gift would be gift cards opposed to money or something else. So we started collecting gift cards for the uh, community and we gave them to the principal for distribution. It was not only um, that round, we had a second round. And in that first round, we collected $2,280 worth of gift cards from grocery stores, from Walmart, and they were distributed to the parents for immediate use at Atkinson Elementary. So we were really, really proud to be involved in that, that effort and to get that work done. Um, they didn't only come from members of this group and from, well, from ACES, but then we do other things that extend further. We get information, we get money, we get uh, books and resources from the greater community. So when it says to whom much is given, much is required, the entire community of 1,700 homes so far in Sun City, it'll be roughly 3,000 when they stop building. But um, right now it's about 1,700. All you have to do is put out the call. 
And if there's a need, you can depend on people in Sun City to meet that need. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So phase one was uh, the amount that we collected from Sun City, from the ACES group, but then we extended it for another month and we opened it up to the entire community and we collected another $1,400 from the entire community. So altogether, it was more than $3,600 that we were able to put into the hands of those parents who needed it the most, especially when some of the resources that were available were starting to leave the area. Uh, we found that there was still a tremendous need. And I'll have um, Dr. Smith come up and talk about her workshop in uh, April, and then we'll close with Kay. Uh, good afternoon. I was fortunate enough to um, be trained in Canada on a program <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> called Tools for Life. And I did just a little bit of a <coughs> an intro with, uh, with the parents. We had a huge group that day uh, in conjunction with Donuts for Dads. So we had over 50 people, so I put them in groups with the help of everyone, <coughs> and uh, they were in family groups. And we did a little bit on identifying emotions in yourself and in other people. Then we went into a character trait uh, thing where I, they used children's books and identified character traits. And I also presented the uh, standards <coughs> when you have to answer questions about characters and character traits on the milestone test. And I gave them a an example right off the study materials for third grade so they could see. I find parents have a lot of questions how, uh, about things and how they look. But the program gives eight tools for life. And there are eight strategies that you can use when you are confronted with a problem, when you are at risk of acting out or acting in a way that you'd rather not. So I introduced those eight tools and working in the family groups, I gave random situations. And sometimes the parents would answer, sometimes the children would answer, but we worked through some of those situations and uh, they did a great job for just a quick 45 minute overview. So I loved it, we had a great time and uh, thank you. And mysteriously, people uh, drew numbers or something and they got more gift cards in their hands just for attending and winning a lottery. So they went home with books, gift cards, and the eight tools for life. And donuts. <laughs> and, donuts. Right, right. And, and then finally, uh, we'd like to have um, Ms. Blount come up and tell you about the, the final workshop that is scheduled for May. We're excited about it. Good evening. I'm real excited to be here. You may have picked up already that I am not a Georgian. I'm originally from New York City. I was a uh, principal and assistant principal, as well as a math coach. <laughs> we do it the Brooklyn way. Um, however, in my second life, I'm actually a certified health coach with Dr. William Sears um, Institute. And I felt it was important to do the workshop that you see listed called To Eat or Not to Eat. Parents don't understand the impact of the diet on their children in school. When I'm at the grocery store and I see what those parents are feeding their children, I just want to scream. So part of my workshop is to go through a few things that parents should be aware of when they are shopping. I'm hoping that it makes a difference. Um, many of our children have been um, uh, categorized as ADD or AH AHD, when in fact they're NDD, they're nutrient deficient. And I'm hoping that this workshop will bring to light some things that they need to know and help their children to grow and to su be successful because that is the ultimate goal. Thank you. In summary, we just want to point out that in our book drive, um, we uh, collected books that were valued at $14,471.66. Um, and the, the uh, collection and distribution uh, so far, we have distri distributed more than 2,018 books that have been cataloged and partially distributed. And for the tornado relief, as I said, our first phase of that netted $2,280, which we presented to uh, Atkinson Elementary to Dr. Campbell in March, on March 1st. And phase two was open to our entire community. And of that, we collected an additional 
uh, $1,405, of which 550 has already been distributed and the balance we're hoping to distribute between now and our last workshop. So we've been very pleased with the pouring, outpouring of love and support. And just very quickly, there's our brochure. That's Grandparents Day and our involvement in that. Just some pictures in review. This is us cataloging all of those books and some of the distribution uh, of those books. This is the bulletin board that we have at Atkinson Elementary, sort of making parents aware of what we do. This is us on display in, in advance of one of our workshops. And actually, that was um, open house when we were first doing the surveys, and we passed out about 400 surveys, I believe, altogether. And then this is the day we presented the check to Dr. Campbell. We're very proud of being blessed to to have that kind of involvement. This was at one of our most recent workshops. Again, the book distribution. And in closing, I'll let Chandra close us out. Okay. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Yes. Uh, in closing, we just want to say that we will continue our commitment to Atkinson Elementary School for the next school year, 2023-2024. We will continue our commitment to increasing literacy and academic achievement through book drives and monthly parent workshops. We thank the Griffin Spalding County School District for the chance and the faith that you have placed in us. And we look forward to continuing with our community partnerships in next year and more years to come. Um, the other thing, thank you so much. We appreciate all of it. It gives us a boost. But another person that did not get a chance to speak is Dr. Elena Anderson. And she has created a wrap for us. Uh, so to close us out, we're going to let Dr. Anderson give you the SCP Parent Academy wrap. So I retired from Detroit Public Schools as a principal, and I did a wrap for the children and, and community and staff way back then. It was relevant way back then, and it's relevant now. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the letters of the alphabet, spell out the situation for every generation. Have you gotten the message yet? Turn off the TV, unplug the radio. Don't you even think about the video. Go for yourself this time, educate your own mind. Reading is crucial for your survival. Say read. Read. Say read, read. Say read, read. Say read. read. Say read. Ladies, if you would join us up front for a photo, if you would join us up front for a photo, thank you so much to your clubs for everything that you're doing for our scholars, and we greatly appreciate it. And we're looking forward to the 2023-2024 school year with you guys. In our school district, we are so blessed to have so many partnering organizations that help us to do this very important work. And so to the um, Parent Academy, to ACES, again, thank y'all so much for all that you do. And we're looking forward to seeing greater things and even attending some of the workshops that you'll do next year. And so just let us know. And I'm sure that any member of this body will be more than happy to support and be there for you. Thank you again.
Could I? Could I? Uh, Absolutely, leader. Uh, I want to plant the seed with uh, our superintendent and Mr. Pew. Uh, you, as you know, the big issue in education has been community involvement. That's been something we've been trying to address, just like all other school systems have been trying to address. Adam, uh, I would like, I would, I, I, I can foresee this being a valuable piece of our efforts uh, to get community involvement. And I would love to see Adam and Brian get together and put together a piece on this parent academy academy group, and we can submit it. We can submit it to uh, 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 GSBA uh, for on behalf of our board because th this right here is what community have been trying to get folks to do, and and uh, we don't want to miss out on this opportunity to highlight what these ladies in their group are doing in our community. Y'all tell Dr. Carter I said got hello, a guy? please. Tell Dr. Carter hello for How me. many guys y'all got? One? Dr. Pitt, no, Dr. Pittman is in there, Dr. John Carter, and yeah. You got three? Okay, all right. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. But we, we Adam uh, and Dr. Simmons, if y'all could make that happen, I can foresee this being a, a piece that uh, would probably spread like wildfire uh, throughout GSB. Mr. Brown, if I may. Absolutely, you're recognized, Chair. I just Meredith. wanted to thank my neighbors and my not only my neighbors but my constituents. I'm going to tell you what they said about Sun City is true. You give people in Sun City an avenue to give back, they're going to give back times a thousand. I myself raised money for my schools in my district, Jordan Hill and Beaverbrook. I think I raised twenty-two hundred dollars for a tornado relief fund from my neighbors in Sun City for Jordan Hill and around $1,500 for Beaverbrook. They were so excited to get these, the money to help families. We didn't go to Walmart and buy stuff and give them bags of stuff. We did exactly what the Parent Academy did. We gave them gift cards that they needed. We gave them gift cards where they wanted to go shop for their families and it worked to a T. But I'm gonna tell you, Sun City is the kind of place where you just wanna go down the street, knock on every door, can you just please give me a 10 minute snippet of your life? I have met so many outstanding people in Sun City and their career path and what they did. I'd like to know how many teacher years, because there are tons of retired teachers in Sun City. I'd like to know how many educational years we have out there. I just wanted to say thank you, Ms. Ponder. I'm so thankful I ran into you a couple of weeks ago. Please keep me updated. We have, we have shared our phone numbers and we will have you again. And Atkinson is blessed. Before you ever enter the door, Atkinson is blessed. Thank you so much. And I remember at the actual, it was open house, I think it, because we had someone who was in higher education administration, I think it was like 120 years just that day at the table. So there's no telling with everybody that's in the club. You said 324 people how many years of experience they have in education. So, you know, we take our hats off to you most definitely. Anybody else? All right. Last but not least, a uh, discussion that I'm sure that we are really waiting for is the Archway Partnership. I am going to hand it over to the vice chair of this body, Mr. Will Doss, to set us up for the conversation. Um, Adam, if you would be able to kind of scribe our ideas, because when we meet tomorrow, these are the things that we're going to put out in the open. So if you would, all right, thank you so much. Mr. Doss? Yes, board members, um, this whole topic that we've been having as far as the uh, Parent uh, Academy and what they are doing is kind of works into this whole community aspect of what Archway is supposed to be for our entire community. Uh, so we've had a couple of discussions. Uh, the city has had some their meetings the county uh, met yesterday last evening i haven't heard all of the things that that came from that we are meeting two board members and our uh, superintendent uh, with the city the county and the um, schools are going to be meeting in the morning to see what the next steps are with the archway project 
but we wanted to make sure that we had identified from our board what we want or what we need in order to continue moving forward with Archway. Um, I know that Ms. Uh, Barbara Joe had said that she wanted to see some quarterly reports uh, to be given on a regular basis going forward. We discussed the possibility of other school projects that the students of UGA could be working on for us. Um, I know Dr. Simmons is interested in continuing with uh, community schools aspect and wants to do it with or without community involvement. Uh, obviously easier with community involvement. But I'd love to hear from the other board members as to what you see as important so that uh, when Mr. Brown and I go to that meeting, we can share those with you. So this is, this is going to be an open discussion. I'm not going to preside over it. You guys just feel free to speak um, when you are moved to do so. so uh, but I do want to just put it out in the open. Whoever can go first. I, I'll start. Uh, as you know, I'm, I haven't been as of late a real big fan or cheerleader uh, about Archway because I, I think we missed the mark of what it originally started out uh, to accomplish. And <clears throat> going back to the beginning, when it was first uh, presented to the leadership in this community, uh, one thing that was, that was made a priority was that each entity uh, needed to agree to work on a certain area, need to work together going forward, uh, advocating for that, whatever that identified area is. And uh, at that time, it was education. But, but uh, I'm just going to be honest. We, we, we have elected officials uh, that, that, that roll us under the bus for lack of a better term. Uh, and, and, I, and I just can't, I just can't continue to support him uh, archway when we are not working together, moving the same way. And uh, until I see that happen where we collectively agree, uh, and, and you can go anywhere. Uh, these ladies that just gave this presentation, they lived in places all over, over the country, been in places all over the country, and they'll tell you a successful community has a great education system. It, it, no one, it's not a secret. Everyone knows people want to move to an area that has a thriving, high-level education system. The things that we have to overcome, we can't do it alone. We have to have city, county, school system, community involvement. We all have to work toward improving it. And, and, and what I would like for you all to take back to them is, is because some on there were not here. I uh, think myself and Ms. Cook were the only ones on, on, on either board, probably a couple more, uh, that was here from when Archway originated. And it was said and it was told by them, by the young lady who was the, uh, uh, I guess, she, the executive officer for the Chamber of Commerce in uh, Henry County. And she told us that what they decided to do in Henry County, everyone got behind education, whether it was to, uh, for funding, whatever it was, everybody supported it. And, and they may, they're not perfect, but you, you can go there and see, you know, new schools and uh, they, they are well diverse and things of that nature. We have to do the same thing here in our community if Archway really wants to be effective. We can name little stuff that Archway has done uh, to help more so the city and the county, but Archway really hasn't done anything to help move anything forward, in my opinion, to move education forward. So that's what I look for, if you could relay that message we need to focus on the education system. We don't need, you know, out of professional courtesy, um, we don't need a board member from any of the city or the county 
throwing the school system under the bus. They should be, should be advocating for our school system. They, they should be a cheerleader for our school system. And I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. And, 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 and uh, I, I've, I've, I've said that before, but it hasn't changed. We go do these retreats and we come back and we go to our own silos and it's business as usual. We cannot continue doing the same thing and expecting it to change. So if y'all to relay that message, mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying not to be show my passion about it, uh, Archway, but I am passionate about, about Archway and what it could be and what it's not doing because it could be a lot better than what it has been in this community. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> so, um, Mr. Graham, I'm sorry. Oh, you want to go ahead? Oh, it, it doesn't matter. No, I, I yield to you. Go okay. ahead. Okay, thank you. I, uh, I agree with everything Mr. Holmes has, has said before and he said again today. My vote will depend on, I, I'm not prepared to vote in favor of or against Archway until I find out who the new director will be. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I think that's one reason we're having this discussion today because I know COVID caused a lot of, uh, what, what am I trying to say? COVID caused a lot of bubbles for it not perhaps move forward as it should, as it did in all facets of our life. But uh, to me, it's going to be who, who they hire to be the director. And uh, I don't know I don't know what the timetable is on that. Mr. Doss, do you? I can give a little bit of information. I know that the second round of interviews have been done. Um, I don't know. I know that there were at minimum four candidates that were highly qualified. Um, I don't know who, what, when, where, or anything about that. Um, I do know that they are in the meeting this morning, you know, one of, or in the morning. One of the things is a determination is, are we moving forward with Archway? Because obviously they don't want to hire somebody that they're not going to then be able to fulfill fill that process. So unfortunately, I, I don't know the answer to your question, whether that person can be named to you be, prior to deciding if we're going to give it another year, just because I think we have to decide if we're giving it another year before that person is hired. Um, but I know that they're right in the middle of that process, if that makes sense. All right, the city, did, has, the, has the city, is the city moving forward? Did they vote to move forward? The, all three entities are coming together in the morning to have that okay. discussion. Okay, because I know the county is looking for people to help to come up with the rest of the money. They're not willing to put up the entire 20000 I do know that. What was that amount that was? was five. Five? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? I, heard, I understand what you're saying. That is not what was conveyed to me from the county, but that's okay. That we'll, We're going to find out those, inf okay. that pe those pieces of information okay. in the morning. Well, will you get back with us and maybe email us about what what transpired tomorrow? And so Absolutely. We'll I think we both can put that together and get, okay. it, get it to you. Thank you. So as we continue this conversation, um, we are here to provide direction. We are here to determine how we want to move forward within Archway. And so a couple ideas and things that I was able to jot down in, in just thinking through this. Um, I would like to see more projects for feeder and pattern schools, feeder pattern schools. So feeder pattern schools would like to see more projects. On the website, it said that there were 10 projects completed. have no idea what those projects are. But here is what I would like to see as we continue this conversation and move forward. One of the things is for the schools in District 1 or District 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe they want to select however they do it. But I want to see more use of outdoor classrooms. So to come in and, and provide the resources so that scholars and educators that you know, because being cooped up in a classroom, you know, four walls can be uh, allotted sometimes, can be a lot. And if you, like I was when I was teaching, had no uh, windows in my classroom. So 
um, I would go outside. And so I just want us to make sure that if there is, if there are designated areas, the archway will help and provide those resources so that we have a uh, state of the art or a very nice outdoor classroom that makes it conducive for teachers to be able to teach and scholars to be able to learn uh, while they are getting that content delivery. Um, I see that there are also a couple things that they have on their website as it relates to the different projects and programs that they're doing. I would love to see a collaboration with Parent Academy, Academy as it relates to the health and wellness of what to eat and what not to eat. I would love to see some community partnerships, not just within the three governmental entities, but with other organizations within Griffin Spalding that are doing great work to help us move the educational system forward. I also would like to see, as we look at our three, our four different goal areas of operational and organizational efficiency, high performing staff, family community engagement, and student achievement. I want to make sure that there are programs through Archway that are tied to each one of these pillars. So whether we're looking at um, preparing students for college and career ready, engaging high quality instruction, implement and viable curriculum, um, through the resources that they have with University of Georgia through Archway, there are so many resources that we could possibly use in this school district to help. Um, so I would definitely like to see that. As it relates to family community engagement, um, we know that Parent Academy just gave their year in review and we applaud you for everything that you're doing. We want to see some activity like that. We want to be able to see the work that they're doing in our community. Um, I, th I think the last time we talked about it, Mr. Dawes, what was the amount that each entity pays into Archway? 20. 20 Gs. You can have whatever you like. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that those, that 20 grand, 20 K is going to be put into number one, our community and our school district, as well as helping with other projects and programs. It's not about just going down to Macon and staying uh, at a hotel and uh, Kumbaya and, all, and feeding us real good. But we've been saying this time and time and time again, it's, start, it's time for us to see the benefit of this. And I can say that when um, I joined this board and Mr. Doss was chair, you know, I would have the courageous conversation with him and talk about Archway and what they were not doing and what I thought that they needed to do. And through that, I think we were able to build a very good relationship with Ms. Standifer, who was very, very helpful in anything that District 1 was doing and anything that the district did as a school-wide initiative. Archway was right there supporting and helping. So as long as we're able to guide this conversation, this discussion, and tell them what we want, we want to hold them to that. All right, and so when we also think about it, there are many different areas of advocacy in education. And so what I want Archway to do is to find maybe, um, and we can narrow it down just by using our roadmap to success, on areas that they're going to focus on so that we can move forward. And, and I know that um, from Mrs. Cook, who wants you know, quarterly reports, Ms. McDonald, who's been very vocal, to Leader Holmes, who's been very vocal um, in seeing this thing from the, from the uh, inception of Archway, and even to you, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair, who um, supports it in its work, we just want to make sure that it's going to work for our district. And we want to make sure that we have tangible things that we can touch. Uh, Super always talking about read, write, speak, and solve. We just need to see those things through Archway and what we're doing. And now that we've had much discussion and we can give them some, some stuff tomorrow, I'm eager to see uh, what that response would be, even if the city of Griffin is not doing it and the county decides to do it. Um, and so that vote will not take place from this body until May 16th when we have the information that we need to be able to move forward. So um, those are my comments. Are there any other uh, colleagues who have anything to say? Well, I just wanted my colleagues to, uh, to uh, have not talked with Clay Davis, the county commissioner that also lives in Sun City. Um, the county is looking for people to come on board with them with additional funds to 
make up to you know the twenty thousand which i think is not a bad idea i think the more people you get involved um, perhaps there will be a little bit more accountability but mr doss back to the new director i'm, I'm not sure i can until i know that we are in good hands moving forward I, I i don't know that i can vote yay or nay and i think <laughs> that's a pretty important piece of this entire jigsaw puzzle who who will be the new director of archway for the city the county and the school system but i, I i'm not opposed to people helping the school system come up with 20 grand i'm not opposed to people in the community helping the county or even helping the city because you get more people involved then they're they're going to be involved and I, I also agree with clay that people on the executive committee perhaps need to be people putting up the money perhaps need to be on that executive committee too i think that's a great idea he emailed his points to me today about your meeting tomorrow and i'm sure he will share those with you but you know people that have got money the money in the pie need to be people that are speaking for the money in the pie Thank you, Mr. Brown. No problem at all. So are all hearts and minds clear as it relates to Archway, our discussion? All right, Mr. Pugh, you got everything down? All right, Mr. Doss, uh, I mean, your comments are definitely needed as well as a member of the body, so. Well, I, I, I am in complete agreement that there needs to be a, a clear direction. Uh, I'm in agreement that it needs to be beneficial to our school system work and efforts that we are doing and so um, I think the things that have been in place that we're moving towards um, lean towards that and if that continues to be the direction I think we should continue to support that and be in, uh, available with that you know I, again I, I don't know the answer to the question about knowing the you know the professionals prior to our vote um, I know that we are not locked in to having to do a vote on the 16th of May. Um, so, you know, after this meeting, I will get you all the results of that meeting of where we're at, and we'll go from there. All right. Yeah, the county table there, like that here. But, sure. but could I add this comment? Uh, you, you know when you're looking at the leadership in a community, you don't normally think of the school system. You, you normally think of the governmental bodies that, you know, taxes and this and that, you know, uh, supplying services, things of that nature. You don't normally think of the school system. You think of the city government and the county government. And I think that's part of the problem is that uh, people haven't really bought into or uh, don't realize that the school system really drives a community. They, they, I don't think people real, realize the importance of the school system in the piece, uh, in that puzzle. A school system really drives a community. And, 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 and you know, we need to make sure everybody uh, understands that, you know, because People tend to lean toward what the city's doing, what the county's doing, but uh, you know, you, you just got you just got to put more focus and emphasis on your educational system. And I think that's the piece that we've been missing these years. Uh, I don't know if these archway professionals have dealt with the three entity like we we've been doing. Uh, I, I just don't know their their experience, but. I think that's got to be a big piece of the puzzle is how they look at how education fits into uh, a community, and how it leads a community, how it's so important in the development and growth of a community. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, you guys could just relay that and, and, you know, just see if everybody understands or not understand, but at least come to a, uh, some type of resolution that everyone can agree on, on that being a key piece of, the, of our success. <clears throat> well, it seems like we have heard from uh, the elected representatives of the governance team. So now I want to pass it over to the superintendent, who is a member of the governance team, to 
provide input and comments as well. Dr. Simmons. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think from my perspective, um, I have said on time and time again that I do believe Archway has assisted in the development of the relationships that I have with um, both the city and the county manager. At the same time, I, I acknowledge that there's probably more to be seen, uh, but I think that is um, a result of probably not being clear about what we expected to see. I can't speak to those conversations. As Mr. Holmes said, uh, only a couple of us were at the table when those conversations began. Uh, I, I do believe that there's value in having a more centralized focus. I think that's also part of the problem that, that has created some of the um, confusion or, or inability to uh, create some consensus because uh, everyone has a centralized focus. Um, and obviously here in the school district, I, I, I believe that our focus is ensuring that students can read, write, speak, and solve. And I suspect that the county has a focus and the city has a focus in, in what I was expecting from Archway or what we should expect from Archway is to develop a central focus for Griffin Spalding County and move in that direction. Not necessarily at the same pace, not necessarily with everyone lock and step, but we have to move in that one direction. And, and, I, and I think that's what Mr. Holmes has expressed as a frustration. I think uh, until we can de de develop uh, where or what that you know, direction would be, um, you know, we're going to continue to have these conversations. Um, as Mr. Doss said, I, I do believe that the school district has the capacity to operate a community school with or without the partnership of the city and the county. I think it would mean more in the city and county with that partnership. Um, but if that's not what the focus is for the city and the county, then that community school may take a back seat. Uh, in terms of the focus. That's not to say that the city or the county does not want to participate. Uh, we all participate in a lot of things, but we stay focused on the main thing in our life. And I, I think we're going to have to figure out, and I'm not sure that Archway uh, can do that for us. That, that may be a leadership move that the leadership in this community has to make, and we let Archway facilitate that. So again, I'm not sure if we're looking to Archway to lead us or to help us lead. And, and, and in my humble opinion, that's the, the, the conundrum for the groups involved. We have to determine what is it that we want from Archway. Do we want them to lead us in that direction or do we want them to help and facilitate our leadership so that we can move in the same direction? But I do appreciate the opportunity to share my perspective. Thank you so much, Mr. Doss. Anything else to nope. close? All right. So that close out discussion will be meeting tomorrow morning and providing that feedback from the elected members of this body. Thank you so much. All right. Um, information items. Are there any at this moment? Go ahead, Doc. Thank you. Board members, there, there are no formal information items that are attached to the agenda. What I'll share with you is that in Mr. Robert Wheeler's presentation, he talked about some, uh, some impending actions that will come up in the uh, latter part of the month, so I, I'll get that back in front of you in my weekend update. Um, and what I'll offer is, as best we can, I've asked the staff to begin to share with you what their asks will be in June so that we can communicate that to you in May so that you can begin to digest what's needed from them to help you make an informed decision. So while there's nothing attached to the agenda, we do have plans to come before you with requests in June, and I will do the best that I can along with the staff to inform you of that as quickly as we can. Thank you so much. Moving to the next item, board member comments. So we're going to start with um, Ms. McDonald, if you would uh, kick us off for board member comments, if you have any. To say thank you again to the Sun City Group. Thank you for, for all of you being here today. Thank you for the work you do, our employees that are sitting before me. Without you, we wouldn't be here. And um, it's teacher, I thought teacher appreciation week was this week, it's next week? Oh, I know, but some schools are doing it this week. Cause it's I'll just be out at, <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Cause I'm serving lunch at Beaverbrook uh, one day next week. So uh, just to thank our teachers, um, the tremendous work that they do and all of our employees that, that 
the tremendous work that they do. Um, just wanted to say thank you, always. Thank you. Thank you so much to the gentlewoman from the 5th District. Moving on to the Dean of the Board. you have any comments? Yes. As we end the school year, I want to thank our faculty, staff, administrators, students for a job well done. You've had an incredible year and we're almost to the finish line. So congratulations to all of you. We look forward to wonderful graduation ceremonies to celebrate the achievements of all of you because it takes all of us to make this happen. I want to thank the Sun City Group for coming. We appreciate the work that you do. Continue on. Uh, it's a noble cause that you're involved in. The students, the faculty, the staff at Atkinson are so deserving and we look forward to hearing the wonderful accomplishments that come out of that initiative. So kudos to you. I want to give a shout out to Dr. Simmons and Adam Pugh, Sandra Long, counselors, social workers of the Griffin Spalding County School System for partnering with Southern Crescent Technical College last Saturday. We had a wonderful initiative with Amazon and Goodar. They came down and the counselors and social workers helped us identify 200 families that needed food and toys as a result of the tornado. So these counselors and social workers worked long hours at the last minute and made this happen. And it was a wonderful initiative. Dr. Simmons came, Adam came and worked all day. So partnerships are vital to everything that we do. We cannot do what we do without your help. So thanks to all of you. The Dean of the Board has spoken. All right, so me and my man bun now recognize the good reverend. I said the good reverend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I echo everything that um, Ms. Cook just said. Also, uh, one announcement is the Made in Griffin that the Griffin Spalding County School System is a part of on the 14th was not in the announcements, uh, but that cornhole tournament will be taking place. And so uh, lots of activities going on that second Saturday. 13th. Thank you, 13th. May 13th, all right. Uh, Mr. Mays, is there anything, sir? <laughs> Leader Holmes, you're recognized for board member comments. Uh, I like Mr. Doss. Uh, I want to echo everything that's been said. But I also, also want to remind everyone our kids are going to be testing. Uh, we need to be diligent about making sure they are prepared prepared, rested, uh, and one thing that I heard uh, someone say, uh, educators say, uh, do not change their routine. Uh, uh, they was talking about whether or not they ate at breakfast or, uh, or whatever, and because schools are making an effort to uh, provide meals, but if they normally just eat at home or whatever, they say don't, don't change their routine. So. I just want to see our, our babies do well and show how they can actually perform and what they've learned throughout this year because uh, we've had staff to do a lot of work with our, with our babies and to prepare them. And uh, I, I just want us to be mindful uh, that they're going to be going through that process and lift them up in prayer uh, and support however you can, uh, whatever schools in your district. And, uh, and I just thank Again, you ladies, you don't know how much uh, joy you brought me to see what you're doing. I'm a big community person. Uh, I, I really didn't have any idea to what extent you all were doing at Atkinson, but hopefully it lights a fire to other organizations in this community to, to grab hold to a school in, in, in various districts because you don't know uh, until later till one of those kids come back after they've grown up and, and, and uh, you know, establish their, their, their niche in life, they'll come back and say, 
you know, what you did for me was so valuable. And, you know, I chaperoned the, uh, the kids to Washington. I just spent a week with them, you know, not like what you all are doing and what our educators do. But I, I have them come back now. Uh, they've grown up, established <coughs> a career, married, children. And, and I had no idea what maybe I did or said that they remember. So you all that educators, you know how that worked, but the work that you're doing now is a little bit different. And so I just applaud you because I had no idea to the extent that you all was working with Atkinson. So kudos to you, and I'm praying that it catch on fire because that can really change our community. Stuff like that can really change our community. And, uh, and I just thank you all. And I, you, you, uh, the way you came and presented today uh, really, really gave someone some knowledge that they didn't have because I got some knowledge. So I, th I thank you all for being here. And I thank our staff as they are, they are grinding toward the end of the year. I always tell, I always check on the superintendent, ask me, is he okay? And uh, I, I was kidding with Miss Battle earlier. She was going to a meeting. Uh, with I think Dr. Taylor and she was walking from the, her building up here and I was sitting in my car so she didn't see me she had a backpack on <laughs> I was joking with her I said Miss Battle you look like you were walking the green mile <laughs> trying to get to the building <laughs> so I said I know they're tired staff is tired we're almost there so I encourage you to pull that little special uh, extra energy up and finish out the year strong uh, because it's going to be all worth it. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. Thank you so much, Leader Holmes, <laughs> for your board member comments. And just to echo everything that my colleagues have stated, to Parent Academy, thank you guys so much for the work that you do in our schools. To our new instructional leaders from Orr's Elementary and Susie B. X. Elementary, congratulations to you. We're looking forward to supporting you in the next school year coming up. And to the scholars that are testing, do what you know to do. You've had an amazing year and great instruction uh, to all the work that Dr. Taylor and her team does to prepare our scholars for testing and for the real world. So we just want to say to the scholars, you know, take it easy. And we're looking forward to those threes and those fours being proficient and distinguished learners here in Griffin Spalding. And um, I think that's it. I think that is it. So at this time, we do not have executive session. Oh, also thank you to Chase, our uh, stand-in for our board of attorney. Thank you so much for what you do, keeping us out of trouble. And um, no executive session. Is there a motion on the floor for adjournment? So moved. All right, it has been properly motioned by the dean of this board, Mrs. Barbara Jo Cook, my former seatmate, seconded by the leader of this board, Leader Holmes of the third. All those in favor, please signify by getting your stuff and walking out. Raise your right hand. <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>